All right. They're about to fire off the six pounder, I do believe. I think it's going to be flipping loud. That's what everybody was telling me. They're also saying close your, put something weird thing with your ears and open your mouth, I guess, for pressure or something. We'll see what happens. But, uh, I'm just going to let it run, so I'm going to shush. And it has a Daisy BB gun telescope in it to give you the crosshairs because the real ones are incredibly expensive and I don't want them smashed or damaged on me. The, uh, one of the rules about the artillery is engraved on the barrel is the monarch's, the reigning monarch's badge. So this one has the crown GBI, George VI, RI, Rex and Imperador. What this means is that the guns are a color. As most of you probably know, being historians and, and uh, uh, fanatics of this kind of stuff, is when a regiment goes into battle back in the Napoleonic time, they troop the color. All the soldiers knew what their flag looked like, right? That way, if they got lost on the battlefield, because back then the fog of war was very real. All the smoke powder from the black powder muskets and, and cannon just filled the valleys. And so to find their unit when they're lost on the battlefield, they look for the colors sticking up. So that one's mine. They'd head back to it. Well, the, art, the artillery sort of said, we don't need no stinking colors. If a gunner gets lost, what's he do? Yeah, listen for the really loud booms, right? You've got a 50 50 chance of getting the right side. And frankly, in the artillery, we say there's only two kinds of people gunners and targets. So it doesn't matter which side you end up. Anyway, that's our little joke. Um, but what that badge means is that the gun are, is our color. So we always treat the gun with respect. You can sit on it, stand on it, lean on it, whatever you have to do to serve the peace. That's considered honorable. But if you're just feeling lazy, don't put your lazy ass on my gun because I'll kick it all over hell for you. Okay? So, and that, that stands for all of the Commonwealth artillery. Our guns are our color. <coughs> Another thing, you'll notice every time I step around the gun, I keep one hand for the gun. And that's because we don't want people tripping and smashing their teeth out of the gun. It means some poor gunner has to clean the blood off and drag your body away. At the museum, our attitude is if you do that, we drag your body out on the highway. And then after you get run over a couple of times, you call 911. <laughs> Okay, quick firing, so it has an automatic system here, depending on where you set this, when the gun fires, as the breech comes back to about here, so don't stand behind it, there's a great YouTube video of one of these firing in Taiwan, and the gunner stands behind it, loads it, and it doesn't load properly, so he slaps the round again, and it triggers it accidentally, and the thing comes back and breaks both his legs, throws him over there. So don't do that. Don't stand behind the gun. Load from the side. Okay? Um, it's a semi-automatic breech, so when you close it, it closes automatically as you shove the casing in. But here's the unique feature on an anti-tank gun. The sergeant doesn't get to shout fire. Okay? He's in charge of the gun, but instead of saying fire, what the sergeant says is engage. So he'll read the gunner onto the target. Target, tank, panther, tracking left to right, range 500. Okay. He'll set the range on his sight. He'll get in there and go, panther, target identified, tracking. As soon as he says tracking, the sergeant then says engage. Why would he say engage? Because he can't see the frickin' tank through the sight, right? So he doesn't know if it's on. So what he does is the gunner, once he gets the order engaged, that's his executive order to fire. So the gunner will then continue tracking the tank. Note this feature about the anti-tank gun. They don't have a crank to turn the barrel left and right. The American model did, but ours don't. The gunner uses his body weight so that he can smoothly track the target. And once he's tracking properly, he'll say, on, 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 and then he'll fire it automatically. So the third on is when everyone covers their ears and the sergeant watches to see where the shell goes. Okay? So, any questions about the gun itself? 
1,500 meters for any tank work, 5,000 meters if you're doing indirect fire. Now, we're going to fire the blank out of this in a moment. First, I have to go and do my safety announcements. Secondly, I have to have everyone over here come behind the trunnion. This is the trunnion. Forty-four years in the artillery, and I think I can still hear. My family says otherwise. <laughs> Protect your ears, folks. Hey, load. Uh, not past the trunnion. Stay this side of the tree. Thanks, guys. This gun is hot. <laughs> Just want to make sure no one's over there. This will probably set off car alarms, not sure. Nope, we're about to find out. Well, there's a car moving over there. If we fire now, he may crash into something. <laughs> Top side, range 100. <laughs> it's real hard to track that one. Okay, Kyle. Folks, everyone protecting. Watch your ears. Stand by. And fire. Jesus Christ. Uh, holy shit. I could feel that, man. Sweet Jesus. Oh, no thanks. Jesus. Could you feel that, eh? Thanks. Any questions about the six pounder anti tank gun? Please, please do come and visit the Swords and Plowshares Museum in Cars, Ontario. You can Google us. It's spelled the Canadian way Swords and Plowshares, P A L O U G H. As my American cousins say, what's, the, what's a pluck? Swords and Plowshares, okay? Come on out and visit. Thank you. Sweet.